Many riders will say the fans, media, and other competitors never really see the true secret to success. It's all the work, meetings, and decisions made behind closed doors and through the collaboration of a team group, resolute in a single objective. We are now in an important period of the year. It's, it's when we need to prepare everything to start the season uh, as strong as possible. This is the same like a uh, study when you are in a school. If you don't study and then you have to go to the exam and then you, don't, you didn't study, you, it's impossible to pass. So it's, it's more or less the same. It's where we need to uh, evaluate all the things we did uh, wrong last year, in which areas we need to reinforce our weak points. Uh, the riders need to start to preparations on uh, directions to arrive uh, stronger possible on the race number one. So now is the time especially to, to focus on these points that during the year we don't have the time to, to make this job. here at the winter test only two weeks after Qatar and I've got a lot of energy you know I've been very motivated to get back on the bike and I think it helps having a new ZX10RR and the guys that motivation and um, the camaraderie between me and the mechanics is so good that you know I, I miss these guys so it was nice to come back into the guys this morning. It sounds cliched but the truth is that team chemistry is harder to mix than people think. KRT know they have recently baked liquid gold and are still aiming to fill the cast in 2019. I just didn't find Kawasaki in a bike. I found a great team that I was able to make a step with my own riding and I expect him to do the same. I've been in teams before where it's been a clearly that they've got different materials to myself and you know it kind of it's never a nice situation to be in and I definitely don't feel that way with the KRT team and Kawasaki and you know it's more down to, to me to you know, step up to where Johnny's at. It's so difficult to say where he's going to slot in. He could reinvent himself and, and come out and battle for the championship or, or not. It's tough. It's the world championship. Why has it come my way for the last four years? You've got incredible riders here. It's a huge challenge for him, and, but one I'm sure he's ready for. And you know, I expect we're going to have some nice battles during the year. Joining the team that's pretty much won every single race uh, the last four years, uh, you know, never in my career have I gone into a team that should win the World Championship. This bike and team is expected to win the World Championship and, you know, obviously Johnny's proven that for the last four years, so to have that opportunity is, is a little bit of pressure, but it's one that I'm welcoming and, you know, I'm going to kind of grab with both hands. The introduction of rev limitations by World SBK rulemakers in 2017 were made to quell KRT's dominance. That didn't work. Ray and Kawasaki still decimated the 2018 championship with 17 wins and 22 podium finishes from 25 outings. The same defiance is being channeled into the new season as the green bikes still carry the big targets of being number one. Expectation carries weight and pressure, but KRT have been able to sleep easier in the last half a decade by knowing the engineering and ideas behind the ZX-10RR means a competitive piece of machinery.
the fine-tuning of electronics, the need to find the limit between grip and wear of the Pirelli control tires, and the adherence to the rulebook means a number of skilled minds go into providing Ray and Haslam with their track weapons. The frame is more or less the same, it's just a few modifications. The engine, we have few updates and it's quite different. We really hope the new engine will be a good step forward. Of course, in racing, everything uh, moves forward, so we can't stick with what we had. Kawasaki were very clever to bring out a, not a complete revolution, but evolution of the bike, and I'm sure we can reach a much higher potential with this bike. Development never stops, you know, as a rider, you're always at the, the forefront of fine-tuning the bike, finding a good way, or, you know, trying to make the bike do certain things. The engine character is the biggest difference, but we have to change the chassis to get the best out of the engine, you know, it wants me to stop really deep in the corner. And right now, I can't do that from a chassis point of view. So it's just work. It's winter testing, and that's what it's for. It's a real step-by-step -step process. You can't just find the perfect bike in one day of a test. We all understand each other, communication's good, and um, that's key to, to turn up at Phillip Island with a you know, race-winning package. Ray is rapidly off the mark in the winter and adopts his usual placing at the top of the timing screens. KRT setup and the work for 2019 pushes on. There is a new standard and pace to get to grips with. When I get rear lift, every time it lands, it, 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 it accelerates. So as it lands heavy, it goes up, make a, a big reaction, then I've got to like regroup, re-brake and, and try and stop. If I break a little bit more and break contact, I miss it by miles. Liam is stepping into our group, into this team. He didn't ride um, in World Superbike for three years, so the bike is different. Electronics are different, suspensions uh, are different, and also the tires. The bike, as we know, is good anyway. So I think it's just Leon now getting more used to the, the electronics again. You know, how the bike actually puts a good lap time up. The riders themselves like to keep their reaction sharp by grabbing different types of handlebars. The feeling of two wheels at speed is a language common to any racer, no matter the amount of power or the terrain. We're here at Rocco's Ranch, Catalonia, doing some uh, practicing. Good fun, I've got a good bunch of mates here and we're um, you know, having a lot of fun every day. I find riding the motocross bike is really good for my brain because it your, the concentration levels required to ride a bike for 30 minutes is, is quite similar to to what we experience on a superbike and to do it with friends. You know, I grew up with Martin Barr and he, he joined us this year and that was cool. We sort of reconnected after our careers went completely opposite when we were teenagers. You know, we've always been really good friends and uh, you know, it's class to come out here riding with him. It's really good training for him and also good for me because you know, Johnny can still ride a motocross bike and I've no doubt if he done a British motocross championship he'd score points easy. Motocross, you're at least traveling at some kind of speed, you know, yourself with a motorcycle. I've spent off seasons where I just rode my bicycle at 40 k's an hour and that's, you know, mundane, you know, you're sat on a bicycle and and then you rock up to the first test and suddenly you're, you're managing like a very powerful machine at 300 k's an hour. Theoretically, we don't allow the riders to, to jump on the bikes making motocross, but we give up with Johnny. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes it's every team manager's worst nightmare to hear that you know, your rider's off motocrossing, but I grew up with it and it's part of who I am really, so um, it's been part of my preparation now for four years. So we're here at the uh, Ricky Cardus um, uh, Racco Ranch, which is literally a few hundred yards away from the team. Today we're, we're doing the flat track. Awesome, you know, I've not done much flat tracking, but you know, to learn the skills of uh, finding the grip and uh, obviously getting around in concentration and all that, you know, fantastic for training. Well, 
like I'm laying it flat and I see a video of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, in particular, has an intense zone of focus. It means his ability to test new technical thresholds in only a matter of laps is almost unparalleled. He is one of the very best motorcycle racers on the planet for this reason. I don't get hung up too much on lap time or performance or, or even comparing myself to others. If we can get through all these test items and, and I can honestly feel the difference, whether it's positive or negative, and put it on the shelf or put it back in the bike and put a package together. That's what it's all about. After hundreds of laps and hours on the ZX-10RR, Haslam is feeling more at home and finding his groove. The lap times start to come down and a good race pace becomes more natural. amazing you know first test of 2019 come back to the same track and we've improved like I think nearly 0.8 of a second from the time that we did last time it was on for a really good time until the last sector uh, would have put me I think p2 you know to be p3 on a race tire versus some of the guys on cues yeah over the moon making a real good connection with all the boys and uh, making some really good steps with the bike Leon uh, has a lot of experience he was very clear on his comments and we worked in the correct direction from the very beginning and to end the, the day with only a few tens off uh, riders who were able to win races over the last few years makes me, uh, makes me happy and confident. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the official Kawasaki Racing Team launch for the 2019 Motul FIM Superbike World Championship season here in San Remo, Australia. It's the first time we get to see our bikes all together. Everyone on the team turned up, so it's a really cool event. We are here at Philip Island, my, my favourite circuit of the whole calendar. Uh, I got my first ever win here in World Superbike, and the last time I was here, I won on, the, uh, on another manufacturer, so uh, I can't wait. I think we should have a good chance there for podiums or even a win. The 2019 Motul FIM Superbike World Championship gets underway here in Phillip Island next Saturday. Don't miss it. The shape of 2019 is beginning to solidify.